Let me just talk to the FG show. Jeff, how are you, my friend? We are a few days away from WrestleMania. We are two days of WrestleMania, in fact. I know. It's a lot of WrestleMania. I don't know how much I'm... I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to watch. But I'm going to watch as much of it as I can. One day of WrestleMania is much, many, much WrestleMania. <laughs> but two days is, is, is a lot, a lot. So um, what are you looking forward to? Uh, well, actually, first, wait. Did you I watch mean, the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony? I did. I watch it. Well, I will say every year, but I didn't watch every year. I don't know. I, I'm a nerd for that type of stuff, the whole nostalgia aspect of it. So, And I know we always joke how you are. I mean, you're not that much older than me. You're eight years, I want to say. Yeah. But um, how. Which is a lot, by the way. But now. Uh, which, but the people I grew up watching are now getting inducted, yeah. which to me is just bonkers. Yeah, welcome to my like, life. Um, although, you know, I, I Eric Bischoff was a big deal for me because I, you know, came into wrestling during like the WCW NWO thing. Like that's what really got me into it. Okay, so, so yeah. Well, that it was a big year for me too because growing up, Kane was my favorite wrestler. I mean, Kane is my fa- is one of my favorite wrestlers right now. I'm very yeah. sad. I was so, actually really sad, and my sons knew that I was going to be sad when they when he was in there because they were like, "Wait, does that mean he's done?" And I was like, "Guys, he's pretty much been done." But like, yeah. But I mean, like growing up, we had a trampoline. We'd play wrestling on the trampoline, and I always played Kane. That was always my person. Now, as I'm older, my favorite of all time is Edge, who is also a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But Edge and Kane, they're up there. Yeah, man, I. Uh, it's a. Uh, it, it is. It, you are right. It is cool. I'm glad that they turned it into like a Super Bowl week type of event. I am so looking forward. To, man, listen, I am so looking forward to uh, watching wrestling when it's a real event again. Like. I, that's like, for me, that's the big thing is the crowd and the pop and the insanity. And I just can't imagine the, the insanity of the crowds. You know what I mean? Like, well, they're, they're having fans. Yeah, they are. Yes. I think they said about 30,000 fans. And I think that's why they chose to have it two nights so more people could go and see I mean, it. That's fair. I mean, I'm talking like when they, when things just go back to normal. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm excited about, so it's in Raymond James Stadium again, and last year I was so excited because one of my favorite things about WrestleMania is seeing the WrestleMania, just the marquee and how the stage is going to look. And it, I'm like, oh, it's going to look so cool. They're going to have, like, the pirate ship. They're probably going to incorporate the Buccaneers pirate ship. It's going to have a pirate theme. It's going to look real cool. And then, of course, you know, that was ruined, and all we got was an empty pr- performance center yeah no this is this is their opportunity to really do some cool stuff yes we actually have some people watching um so we have we have done our uh appropriate wrestling vamping we'll talk next week because we always do talk about wrestlemania um you know because that's what we do for the first few minutes of our show because why not um we should probably clip that out and just turn it into its own mini wrestling podcast it's actually kind of funny yeah everybody yes yeah. <laughs> even jeff talk very wrestling. much Thank you very much for popping in and joining Jeff and I. It is Thursday. It is the EFG show. And what's really funny about this, Jeff, is before we went live, you were like, man, this is a slow week. And I was like, dude, you've been asleep. Uh, because this week has uh, not a ton of news. It's not like, you know, we had like a big press conference or anything. But some very significant news. And uh, stuff that we are going to be super excited to talk about in a little bit. To give some people some teasers, E3 is back. We're going to talk a little bit about that. MLB The Show is going to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, And The Oregon Trail is back on uh, Apple Arcade. It's back, and this time it's on Apple Arcade. Oh, I'm quiet. Uh, Okay. So, and there's a new Battle Royal game. Oh, I should probably put my microphone near my face. Thank you, Mega Mom. <laughs> She's our audio check. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Am I better? 
Yeah, I've got. I just uh, brought up some uh, gameplay from the game. Uh, I brought up a YouTube video. We'll go watch that in a little bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, and this new Oregon Trail, I, I kind of dig. I think just my fr literally, I turned it on. Jeff watched me turn it on, and I watched maybe 15 seconds before we got to work. And already in the first 15 seconds, I was like, this is what I want. This is what I need. Also, it's on Apple Arcade, so it doesn't have to have microtransactions or anything like that. So, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Jeff, we may as well just get right started. You are uh, you wear many hats here at Engage Family Gaming. Um, and the one that is the hardest job for you is the one you gave yourself. You scour the internet and find all of the family-friendly video games and put a blog post, or rather, a, you put a post up on the Engaged Family Gaming Facebook page, and then we work together and you turn that into a blog post on the Mothership website. Jeff, tell me, what family-friendly video games came out this week? Yeah, so this week, from the week of April 4th through April 10th, we had, starting on Tuesday, April 6th, we had Breath Edge on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, Lost Words Beyond the Page on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Oddworld Soulstorm on PS4, and that should say PS5, so that's a mistake on my part, because the PS5 version is with PlayStation Plus. That is correct. So, and also, if you do not have a PlayStation 5 yet, but you have PlayStation Plus, go through, go to your PlayStation account on the PlayStation Store website, and you can still claim it. I'm still mad I did not know that at the beginning because I still have not played Bug Snacks. What are you gonna do, man? You, you, it'll be it, it, it'll be free. Well, uh, no, you're pretty much you're gonna have to buy it. It'll be on sale. Yeah, it'll be on sale. I mean, it's not that pricey. I'm just, you know, versus free versus money. I'd I'd take free. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, uh, what else? Yes. Continuing on Tuesday, we also had stacks on stacks on stacks on Switch. And Star Wars Republic Commando on PS4 and Switch. Uh, Thursday, April 8th, we had Astro Aqua Kitty on Switch. Cozy Grove on PS4, Xbox One and Switch. Put a pause in that Don't one. Don't give... Cozy okay. Grove is uh, Mega Mom. This is a game you're going to want to take a look at. It's a little uh, isometric farming survival game. Very cute aesthetic. Uh, just got some other different gameplay mechanics. Uh, I know Amanda, who is on our Engage Family Gaming podcast, will be streaming it on Ready Player Mom at some point. I'm not sure when, because she has a lot of games in her queue. Uh, so, you know, we'll certainly be able to talk about that. The game is called Cozy Grove, C-O-Z-Y, Grove. And uh, it, at the very least, it looks very pretty. I really like the art style, the way that it's colored, etc. Um, so... Uh, we'll talk more about that on the Engage Family Gaming podcast coming up, but this one is particularly on our radar based on, you know, kind of its gameplay and its aesthetics. Uh, we just recorded a podcast last week about why, you know, like, why are um, farming games so awesome? And this is kind of, you know, one of those games. So, carry on, Jeff. Yeah. I would have to say probably not a game I'll check out. I have learned that farming simulators are not for me. What? No, so. it's okay, Jeff. You know what? I am all in favor of people knowing what games are for them. I think that that is... Yeah, and I always, I always thought they were until everyone tells me that Stardew Valley is the best farming simulator, and I realized I didn't like it. You know what? I think part of being a gamer, quote-unquote... And this is like, if I were to ever define what a, like a real gamer is, I think knowing what you like is probably like number one, right? Like, you don't have to play everything. Yep. You don't have to... No, know. and it... So... And it's good because they don't have time to play everything. Exactly. No, nobody has time to play everything. Thousands of games come out every month. Um, but knowing what you like uh, is so good. I am so proud that you know. And, and you know what? Missing... If farming games are not a great game to play just for the sake of playing, because as Mega Mom and I know, farming games are a time investment. So like if you can just cross those right off the list, man, that's a that's saving you dollars and time is money, friend. So 
All right. Anyway, carry on, Jeff. Yes. Also coming up on Thursday, we had Don't Give Up, A Cynical Tale on Switch, Graviter on Switch, Legends of Tally Arcadia on Switch, Luxlaner on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. All right. I'm, this is going to take Pixel Game Hero series, Osia Berry, Horigio, Holland Slash on Switch. All right. Yeah, that was a mouthful. Uh, Potion Party on Switch. Sakura and Gameland on Switch. Super Faust 2 on Switch. And What the Dub on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And I kind of, when I'm going through these games, I learn about games that look interesting. And I, if you're looking for a party game, What the Dub looks like it could be hilarious played with the right group of people. And it's one of those like Jackbox or I know PlayStation has a few games like that where you use your phone. Yep. Okay. So what you do with what the dub is, it says it has over 300, uh, 300 like, you know, bad B-level movies or, you know, dating, like, movies you would see. Some, and it'll it'll play it normally, then a little bit, it'll just, the, the language will go out, and then you have to type in what and fill in the dub. And then it actually uses the text-to-speak to play your video or reading it. Then you and your friends all vote on what's the funniest. That could be dangerous. That it is. could be dangerous, but as I said, with the right group of people, it could be really fun. It's true. It's true. It could be great. It could be great. All right, what else we got? Uh, coming out on Friday, April 9th, we had Gravity Heroes on Switch, Raven Sword Shadowlands on Switch, Say No More on Switch, Skyland Heart of the Mountains on Switch, The Legends of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4 on Switch, Tori 3D on Switch, Yoko and Yuki Dr. Rat's Revenge on Xbox One and Switch. And then on Saturday, April 10th, we had Dot Cat on Switch and Candy Match Kitties on Switch. Huh, okay. And all Candy Match Kitties is, was pretty much Candy Crush on Switch. Cool. I mean, listen, Candy Crush is great. Candy Crush is great. Um, I think it is uh, a, a good segue to just go in and look at this gameplay from this new Oregon Trail, because that also came out this week, uh, specifically on Apple Arcade. Before I do this, Apple Arcade is a service you get it on, you know, obviously it is on iPhone, but you can also, it's on iPad and Apple TV. And the, uh, it's $5 a month, which is not a huge amount of money. Um, you know, I can understand, you know, it all adds up. Apple Arcade has like 180 games on it starting now, and they just recently added a whole bunch of older classics as well as kind of, uh, and when I say older classics, I mean things like Checkers Chess, Backgammon, like basic apps that have a bunch of those kind of just standby games that weren't on there. And that, I think that just serves so, to kind of fill some of the gaps. So by, so by older classics, you mean even older than you. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Wow, did you hear this? <laughs> Jeff chose violence today. He chose violence. Um, you are right. It is uh, things that are older than me, but also things like Monument Valley and Cut the Rope, um, and some other games that are uh, that that were around before and had microtransactions and you know things kind of holding them back, and now they're just out here, full games. One thing is uh, Star Trek Legends, which was a gotcha game when it first came out and now you just kind of play through it and you get to play through like a cool star uh, star trek story if you are of the star trek uh you know in, uh, in inclination i don't know why that was so hard to say but it also includes this oregon trail thing so we're gonna uh play it and see what happens so we're gonna go over to the and i'm gonna give it a try Enjoy.
have um, see, I'm going to go back to us for a moment so that people can actually hear you. Um, I think people would have just kind of accepted it as an Oregon Trail remake and been fine. Like, I don't think they necessarily had to do this, right? Like, But the fact that they did it, I think, is really cool. I don't know how it's implemented, but um, considering the dust-up on Twitter over the last couple days about a game called uh, This Land is Our Land, which is a... More or less, it's kind of like Red Dead Redemption, but told from a uh, Native American standpoint, but made with no Native Americans on their staff. Um, like this, the fact that they collaborated with Na- Native American scholars um, to try and be respectful of what happened, I think is uh, super uh, you know, respectable. Um, and so I'm interested to see how it all works out. Um, and then so... Let's go back to the screen sharing. Why did he leave his horse behind? He just, he just left his horse and he's walking? Egotistical optimistic. That so that's that is Oregon Trail. What'd you uh, what'd you say, Jeff? I said it looks like a lot of thought was put into it. Like it wasn't just a copy and paste, an update of the original. You know, they made it look good. Yeah, no, they absolutely put an effort to try and make it look good. I am a big fan of that. Truthfully, I might spend might have to spend five dollars on Apple Arcade to play it. Yeah, I mean, if you have an iPhone uh, or an Apple TV or an iPad, this is definitely something to take a look at. Um, you know, I don't or know. Or a MacBook? Can't you can't you play it on MacBooks too? Mm, yeah, it's on a- anything so. that runs the Apple OS. You should be able to use it on a MacBook. And this doesn't look like this looks like it would run on a toaster. Like this isn't you know fancy graphics. I mean, th- they have pretty fancy toasters nowadays. True. It's true. Um, you know, I'm just kind of, man, it is, yeah, I, you know what? It just, it even has the, uh, mini game with the shooting with the animals running around. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty cool looking. I am going to, I will report back on this next week. <laughs> Excuse me. But again, I encourage everybody, if you have a, um, and I'm going to switch to the screen sharing just to. We'll go back. So that is the Oregon Trail on iOS. I think it looks really cool. Uh, I have seen a few people talking about it on Twitter who have put more time into it. Heard nothing but positive things. Uh, I, I'm, obviously, I think it's a little e- it's easy to be positive about a game that doesn't cost any additional money. But uh, that already looks pretty cool. And I really do appreciate that message at the beginning where they include uh, Native American characters and representation uh, because I think that's something that was missing from the story of the first one, and uh, and really all of them up until this point. And so, yeah, that's uh, that is going to be an interesting game to talk about over the next week or so. Like I said, I will report back. So, um, so those are our releases. Last week we talked about games with gold. Those are live now. Games with gold and. Uh, PlayStation Plus are live now, so if you're really all about Oddward Soulstorm for some really weird reason on your PlayStation Five, you can uh, you can grab it right now. Um, did we have anything for uh, the collector's corner? Any, or did you not get mail this week? 
No, nothing cool. I, I, I mean, it's not gaming related, but I got the Friend Central Perk Lego set. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Um, I... uh, but nope, nothing there. All right. But we did have, speaking of games coming out, there was another game that was Shadow Drop this week as well. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about, let's talk about, you're talking about Pac-Man 99, aren't you? Pac-Man 99, yes. All right, guys, listen. <laughs> Nintendo had Tetris 99, which is still available. They had Mario 35. And now we have Mario. Pac-Man 99, which is exactly what you would imagine. Uh, let me uh, let me go on into the YouTubes and get us a trailer. Um, it and is. And no one no one knew this was coming. It was just Nintendo tweeted it out and said it will be live at nine o'clock the next day, or might have been even. It was the I next day. It, wasn't it? it was the yeah. next day when they did it. Um, so here we go. This is the trailer. Yo, listen. Oh, Kate, oh, that's right. Kate probably. I didn't know if you saw this, but I know you enjoy some Pac Man. Ready, everybody? In the online battle royale game, Pac Man 99. This game is available as a special offer for Nintendo Switch Online members. To win, you need to be the last Pac Man standing. If ghosts are closing in on you, grab a power pellet to chomp them. to attack other players as Jammer Pac-Man. This also works the other way around. Bump into one and your movement speed will drop, so watch out. The key to victory lies in sleeping ghosts. If you chomp these stationary slumbering specters, they'll multiply and form a ghost train. Then get ready for an all-you-can-chomp ghost buffet. By pulling this off, you'll overwhelm opponents with a ghostly nightmare. But that's not the only tool at your disposal. Make use of four power-ups to gain an advantage, like one that doubles your movement speed. You also have four targeting options, such as Knockout, which targets opponents on the verge of losing the game. Use these power-ups and targeting options to be the last Pac-Man chomping in the end. Become the best of 99. The Pac-1. Pac uh, that, that looks really cool. Uh, Jeff, you said you played some today. Yes. So how is it? Did you so, first off? How did you do? Well, we're pro gamers not here. Not well at first. What? Yeah, pro gamers. I've never been that great at Pac-Man, so I just want to. For one, battle royals aren't usually my thing. I played Tetris '99, horrible at it. Not great at Tetris. Allowed. Mario '35. I was I was pretty good at. I never won, but I was in the top three multiple times. Uh, you know, I kind of fell off after a week after it came out, but. The problem that I had with Mario 35 was that for a battle royal, it was just too long of a game. Okay. Like, like it became a battle of attrition. Like, whoever can just outlast the other one, they're going to go. This one, Pac-Man works so perfect as a battle royal. If the games go quick. You know, in the span of 10, 15 minutes, I was able to play, um, you know, five, six games. Okay. Um. I got better every time. I think my highest was 14. That's pretty good. So not bad. Yeah, once you get over 50 and people start dropping out, it gets crazy. And then it, you know, as my wife asked me, well, was that luck or skill? And I said, a little bit of both. Yeah. I think... And I think that's any battle royal game. A little bit of both. I think, uh, yeah, I think... You know, when there there comes a point, there's like a breaking point with skill where you can kind of make up for some of it. But you're right. I think the majority of it is, uh, you know, like a combination of those two things. But the, my favorite well, part is when you can't tell, right? Like when you're just yeah. rolling through and doing the best you can and it's just super chaos. 
Uh, this is another one that I am going to be giving a shot over the next week or so, and I will report back. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'll stream it. That could be a little fun. Yeah, it's it was a really fun game. And as I said, like towards the end, get you know, they show those little ghost Pac-Man going around. Like those end up everywhere, and everyone that clamps onto you makes you slower and slower to eventually the ghosts are faster than you are. Whoa. And so you have to try to get a power pellet to make them all disappear. That's intense. So, yeah. That is absolutely maddeningly intense. But And just so, and there are parts of it that are not completely free. So you can play the original version. It's all free with your Nintendo Switch Online. They had a, for, for $14.99, they had some other game modes you could play. Oh, cool. Is one of them being able to play offline? Yeah, with computers. It's kind of. I think uh, there was like Tetris. Pass... I think they did that with Tetris ninety nine eventually. Yeah, and they also have uh, different skins you can buy, and they're like they're not expensive. They're like a, I think they were a dollar ninety nine each. My kid keeps dropping his phone over there. And it's driving me crazy. But yeah, so a dollar ninety nine, which is great. Which I'm like, come on, you can do this. Why can't you just sell me a dollar ninety nine, you know, themes for my Switch? They would make so much money. I don't know why they don't do it. You you know how many themes I have on my 3ds? That I don't even play anymore. I have like ten different themes I oh, switch. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I spent some. I have the great Luigi one that when you open up your 3ds, it makes a pipe noise. It's like, come on, just give me that for my Switch. Give me all these themes. I just, I'm telling Nintendo how I can throw more money at them. <laughs> uh, listen, I, they have to have a reason why they haven't let let us spend money on themes on the Switch. I don't know why, um, but hopefully they will fix that soon because I would be quite excited. So, um, so that's Pac-Man '99. Everybody should go download that right away. Um, so um, I, I will take this opportunity to remind everybody in the chat, if you have Amazon Prime, that means you have Twitch Gaming, and Twitch Gaming includes a free subscription that you can that you can give to a Twitch channel. So if you have Amazon Prime, um, head on over to, I think it's, I don't know, hold on. It is, uh, let's see here. Um, it is gaming.amazon.com. You can sign in and it'll give you instructions to uh, link your Amazon account and your Twitch account. You can uh, subscribe here. Is every uh, Those are free subscriptions that you could give to us every month. And it would help uh, keep the lights on and all that stuff. And help us uh, buy new weird collectibles for the back of Jeff's uh, set or lights or <laughs> who knows what we'd be doing. So um, anyway... Let's talk about the news, because this week was kind of wild. I think, you know, biggest surprise story, I, I, you know what, I'm just going to say it. The biggest surprise of the week for me was MLB The Show 21 coming to Xbox Game Pass. Day yeah, one. for sure. Um, so, for those of you that do not know the history, this is a sports game thing. You know, we asked some, we actually had a question in our Engage Family Gaming community about sports games. And we had some folks talk about uh, what some of the some of their thoughts are. We had some NHL fans, we had uh, some longtime Madden fans, but MLB The Show didn't actually come up much, and uh, it's kind of a shame. And I think part of that is because it's locked in on the PlayStation console, and just not everybody is into it. So. Last year, uh, MLB, uh, Major League Baseball, told Sony that if they wanted to maintain the license, uh, that M that MLB would need to be allowed to publish that um, um, the MLB said that they had to be they wanted to be able to publish it on other systems, and um, and that Sony could not keep it PlayStation exclusive if they wanted to maintain the license. That's like the super simple version. I am sure. I am absolutely sure that there is more that it's more complicated than that. But more or less, MLB flexed their muscles. So the end result is that MLB the show, it, which is the name of the baseball game, is going to be coming to was we knew that it was going to be coming to Xbox last year. So we knew that it was going to happen. 
And so that did not surprise me. We knew they were showing us the cover athletes. They showed us the PlayStation logo. They showed us the PlayStation box, the Xbox box. All that was great. The thing we were not expecting is that day and date, meaning on April 21st, which is just a couple of weeks when that game comes out, MLB The Show 21 will be included as part of Xbox Game Pass. That was a deal that was negotiated by MLB, which is the publisher of that game on Xbox, so Sony didn't really have anything to do with it. Um, And it is a really big deal. Now, there are... Man, the world is full of hot takes on this one. And, uh, you know, there are a lot... And as Mega Mom said in the chat, she said so many people were super frustrated or super surprised by this, and she didn't understand it. Well, I mean... There were some of these that were kind of very buried on some of the factoids, you know? You needed to know some of the history of the game. Um, but, man, were there a lot of people just real pissed. And, you know, angry at Sony, even though Sony doesn't really have anything to do with it. Um, I <laughs> um, I uh, even saw a number of people suggesting that Sony should not make the game. They should just get to the point and, and on... I, April 19th, they should just say that the game is delayed and that they should just never publish it. And, uh, that was real. That was just a really bad idea. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so, all right. I I actually do need to take a moment because I have a a son who is, who is uh, not listening to instruction. So bear with me, Jeff, you can, you you know, vamp about something behind you. And vamp about something behind me. Uh, I will just give my take on it, and that is, I guess, I guess I can go to a little history lesson that uh, sports games and licensing is really confusing with that because you know, you guys have seen I've shown you I have the NES encyclopedia, the SNES encyclopedia. And if you read through those books, there are so many games on older systems where they had, you know, the NFL license, but they didn't have the player's license. And so, and some games had the NFL player's license. And so I can understand where uh, MLB wanted, you know, more people to play their games, especially if Sony, you know, was the only one who could make games with them. I can understand one in your brand out there more. So, I guess while we're waiting for Stephen, I don't want to go off too much. Anyone have any questions in the chat? I wasn't prepared to vamp. Can you see? So... Kate, I'm going to move my camera. The new Lego set isn't completely done, but I can kind of show you it. <laughs> so it's sitting right here. I have half a central perk done. Uh, it has a lot of intricate pieces, and so my fat fingers were having difficulties with it. Uh, but it was like on sale the other day, and I'm like, I got to get this. Um I love the friend show, so gave myself an opportunity to get it done. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. We do this live, folks, so when the kids need me, the hey, kids need me. I was giving the history of how sports licensing and video games was very confusing back in the day. Correct. Oh, good. So you added some extra flavor and context. Thank yes. you, Yes. I, I, so just a quick, I was telling them how like in a, like some games back in the day had the NFL license, but they didn't have the player's license. And some games had the player's license, but not the actual like NFL license. Fun fact, Madden um, does not have the rights to Bill Belichick. He does not appear in Madden. Ever, all the other coaches do. Bill Belichick does not. It's New England Patriots coach, and it's always like a young black guy or something. It's just something different. Um, yeah, and Jordan not being in the NBA games. So it is, it is wild. But fun story about Jordan. I'm gonna vamp real quickly here. Is um, so I listen. A good podcast to listen to from um, Lawson Media is called Gameplay. They come out every other week. And the last 
two episodes have been about NBA Jam. And something I learned about NBA Jam is they wanted Michael Jordan, but since he had his own licensing, he was too expensive to get. So they didn't put him in the game. But then it became so popular, Jordan wanted to be in the game, so they made a special version of NBA Jam with Michael Jordan just for Michael Jordan. I bet you his stats were real good. So um, back to MLB The Show. It's on Game Pass. It's absolutely nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Uh, I can't wait to play it, personally. This was a game that I was not going to buy. Like, I was not going to pay money uh, to buy the game. Uh, but the fact that it is in... Because it's just not that important to me. But I actually do like baseball video games. Um, I just don't like... You know, the sport is a little just... You know, I don't know. It's just not... It's a little dry for me. I have been told that if I could really, like, read the tea leaves... I would understand all the stuff that was going on, but really for me, um, you know, hit round ball with cylinder bat, see what happens. Um, however, baseball video games I really like, and what I have, what I understand is the MLB The Show 21 actually has like a casual mode, which is perfect for me. Um, I, I have a feeling where it simplifies a lot of the simulation aspects and maybe maybe I'll get lucky and it'll be like Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball on the SNES and we can just kind of have that with really pretty graphics. That would be so awesome for me. So we'll find out on April 21st because I'm going to download it, no doubt, and play this game. And something that is really showing is, so, you know, as we just talked about earlier in this episode, uh, there's a t in this episode in this show I'm going on my podcast <laughs> uh, this show um, how I lost my train of thought oh there's different type of gamers and you know we know there are plenty of people who just want to play the most recent sports games like growing up my dad was one of those people he would you know he just wanted to play his Madden his basketball his NBA games and all that. Now, Xbox is really showing them that, hey, if you just want to play sports games, you need to get yourself an Xbox system. Yeah, because they're all on I Game mean, Pass. MLB, Madden, NHL. Uh, it seems like the t NBA 2K games come out shortly after they've been released. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. <laughs> it really is nuts. FIFA is on there with EA. Yeah, so it's like... If you're willing to wait a few months, like, if, if you don't need them right away, that's me. Like, as so, here's what happened. I I play Madden every now and then. As soon as Madden 21 was announced on EA Play, so which came out on Game Pass, I went and I played, like, two games. Like, okay, got my fill. I'm good. Yep, absolutely. Um, that's 100% how I feel. So... It is, yeah, this is one of those things. I was super excited to see it. There are some folks, uh, specifically a lot of people that are really diehard Sony fans that view this as a fail for Sony. I don't see it at all. Uh, Sony is getting gonna, paid for... Yeah, they're going to make more money this way. Yeah, Sony is getting paid for all these games that are appearing on the Xbox console, right? Like... The way that it works is some amount of money per download or something that they are making money, and the only people who are like this is a niche game anyway. So I don't know how many people are going to own both consoles and would have bought it on uh, bought it on the. PlayStation, but instead are going to get it on Xbox at no cost. Like that, to be someone that has both of the consoles and an MLB show fan, I don't know. The, the, also, Sony doesn't have a choice. MLB's publishing the game, so they had the choice to determine how it was done. So, it is. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I, I this is not a loss for Sony. They don't really have. A, they didn't have a choice, no. and it's more people playing the game. Uh, I am very interested to see if at some point down the line they put a, some version of the show on the Switch. Because remember, there used to be a, a version of the show on PS Vita back in the day. And let me tell you, if there was a cross-progression between like the Xbox and the Switch for a baseball game, I would be very in on that. 
So, yeah, that would be pretty awesome. So, uh, that's the show. Let's talk about E3. You want to talk about E3, Jeff? Let's talk about E3. So, E3 obviously didn't happen last year because of the uh, pandemic. And it was the worst kept secret. You know, E3 kept trying to push back. Were they going to have an event? Were they not going to have an event? In the end, they ended up not really having either a digital event or a physical event. They didn't have a physical event because it wasn't safe. And they didn't have a digital event because they waited too long. Uh, It was not a really great uh, deal for them. However... They have made two very big announcements. One, E3 2021 is going to be a free digital event that's going to take place between June 12th and June 15th. So, for those of you who are curious, that means... Let's see here. uh, The 12th is a Saturday and the 15th is a Tuesday. I can say with certainty, all of the scheduled events between the 12th and the 15th, I will be here on this page on twitch.tv slash engage family gaming with live reactions to every show uh that e3 puts forward um even the ones that i suspect will not have anything family friendly we're just going to be live and i'll be here i'll probably have a rotating people popping through every once in a while who knows but we are i'm going to be right here and so if you want to watch the E3 stuff, you can watch it right here with me uh, here on twitch.tv slash engagefamilygaming. We don't know a lot. However, we do know that both Microsoft and Nintendo have made it very clear that they are participating as part of E3 2021. Nintendo went so far. Doug Bowser today, maybe it was yesterday, uh, but it doesn't matter. Doug Bowser has come out and said that he is very excited and they have big plans. Jeff, I didn't prep you for this, putting you totally on the spot. Nintendo's going to be at E3 this year. What are they showing us? All right, Nintendo's going to be at E3. They're they're probably going to announce the next Smash DLC fighter. Yeah. Who I'm hoping is either Crash Bandicoot or Sora. You're, you're crazy about Sora. That's not happening. <laughs> I don't think Sora's happening, but that's who I want. You're I putting think that Crash energy Bandic- into the world. Yes. I think, and we've had this conversation, everyone who's watched this knows we do not like Crash Bandicoot games, but I think he would be a good yeah. last person to announce for this fighter's you know pass. Who, you know who I think would be good, and uh, John Roble in the chat will appreciate this, you know who they should put in? Shaq. From Shaq Fu, specifically. Why not? You know, I, I think he's I, I, truthfully. I think Shaq, Shaq from Shaq Fu is as likely as Sora. Um, I I think we're gonna get some Zelda thirty five information. <laughs> they think they're gonna tell us some Zelda stuff. I think that's probably right. Uh, also, Breath of the Wild two will not be coming out this year. There, yeah, we're gonna definitely get confirmation of that by then. Absolutely. Uh, Hopefully, oh, maybe some more Pokemon Arceus Legends. Shaq as Steel. Ooh, I don't know if you ever saw that movie, Jeff. A little bit before I your did time. Not. What? So Shaq was uh, one of the Superman guys who uh, wore steel armor. So he steel. I like that. Um, really, just Shaq as himself. Like his final. What about smash. Shaq as what is it? Kazam, Shazam. Uh, listen, I, uh, Shaq is anything. I, I want Shaq in Smash. He's huge. I mean, I bet you he could knock Link pretty far away. Um, his of uh, his final Smash would be uh, randomly paying for someone's no Smash Shaq and Barkley John Roble. Um, no, his final Smash would be randomly buying an engagement ring for someone at a jewelry store because that's what he uh, that was a TikTok that went up this week. Um, he randomly bought some guy a uh, engagement ring because he's a good dude. Also, he has more money than anyone. Almost. So, um, I agree with you on what Nintendo's going to bring. I think we're going to hear some stuff about Zelda. I think it's a very safe bet that they will tell us that it will come in 2022. Um, and... Yeah, I'm I'm searching something right now. I know Stealth, who is a great person to follow on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Uh, he posted about, like, what Nintendo announced in 2019, which was their last E3. And if it's as big as what that was... Like, oh, it'll be a very big deal. Um, I, 
Uh, I've I've talked to him a little bit. Um, he follows me on Twitter, and I've really I've hinted at him uh, about maybe coming on one of our shows. So that could be uh, maybe we'll get him here on the EFG show at some point because that that'd be kind of wild. He knows an awful you, lot. You got to invite. You have to invite me as well. I'm a fan. If I have and him he on follows the EFG me. show. Oh wait, that's this show, not the podcast. That's. Yeah, that would be this show. This is the EFG show. That's the Engaged Family Gaming Podcast. I know the titles are the same. What are you going to do? Yes, of course you can be there. So um, I agree thank with you. you. Thank you for inviting me to the show I co-host. Yeah, I will definitely invite you to the show that you co-host. I mean, or I'll just I mean, or I'll just live dangerously. I'll just do it all by myself. I'll invite him as a guest but not have him here. I'll just ask questions into the ether and see what happens. Um, that would be dumb. So... I agree with you on the Nintendo front. I I think that's a lot of the stuff they're going to bring. I, man, I just want it to be cool. Like, I am, I have just put it out into the universe that I am going to be here sitting in this desk. I'm going to have to get a cushion, I think, um, for basically four days streaming, uh, co-streaming from the official E3 account, whatever they do. Um, and... Man, it's gonna be kind of it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun ride, but <coughs> excuse me. Um, it, it I'm hoping that we see some really cool stuff out of this one. They also confirmed yeah. that 2022 will be back to a physical event. So this year they're doing digital again, but E3 2022 will be back in LA and it will be a full physical event. I can say with certainty. Gage Family Gaming will not be there, <laughs> but I will be here in 2022 streaming on Twitch. Sorry, I had a teenager making bad jokes behind me. So, uh, what do you what do you think about that? We thought I thought we heard rumors that E3 was dead, and here we are. We got the next two yeah. days. No, Dracon, not your level of bad joke. It was just him being sassy behind me. It's he was, um, it was snooze button doing snooze button things. I will say I am excited because I love E3 season and last year with no E3, I know we had a lot of summer announcements. Yep. But it was really hard for us, you know, when we would do the show, we'd go like, "Oh, this is coming up." Like we couldn't keep track of when things were. Oh man, it was so tough. And I it wasn't to me, I mean, Jeff Keighley does great things. I don't think it was that organized. Like, trying to figure out when's what's happening, and his website wasn't very easy to, no, to it was go really through. Hard. Like, it was really hard. Yes. So, it was really hard on that. So, now we know, and they're still doing Summer of Gaming, but we know E3 is going to happen during this time, and so we know we're going to get a lot of big announcements during this time. Yeah. Um... Exactly. You know, we're going to get a lot of announcements. I hope we're going to see... I'm, I'm just excited to have, like, that hype again, you know? Like, I can't wait to be watching one of these live, have a nice coffee in my hand, you know, and be what You know, it's going to be, you know, 6 o'clock on a Monday night or something crazy, and then just some announcement's going to come up, and I'm just going to freak out, spill my coffee everywhere. You know, like, I want one of those kind of get hype dopamine moments. So that is going to be. I, I'm so looking forward to it, I, man. So, um, and they, they, yeah, they, I try to watch as much as I can, but the Nintendo one, I'm always trying to watch it live somewhere. I know 2019, I was huddled up in my car on my hotspot with my iPad out. Yep, hashtag dopamine, Mega Mom. Um, we're getting T-shirts done with uh, hashtag dopamine, um, and I think that's going to be one of our Twitch emotes. Um, so we're going to be able to, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, so snooze button doing snooze button things. That's what we, uh, that is my son's, uh, online handle now. He has a brand snooze button. So, um, so that's what I will be referring to him as moving forward. He has requested that as part of his, uh, as part of his online branding efforts. Um, anyway, he's being sassy in the background. So, um, they keep saying E3 is going to die, and now we just got two years worth of E3 announcements all at once. Pretty happy about that, because I love E3. 
absolutely love yeah. E3. I've I've always thought it'd be great if they just, you know, made like E3 in a different location every year. Um so but I all I understand all the companies are on the West Coast and that's why they have it over there. Well, the, the only reason they don't is um uh, really the only reason they don't is um because they 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 negotiate contracts with the facility to try and save because this is a big piece of the ESA's money. Like a large portion of what ESA makes is these negotiations. And um, John Robel in the chat will confirm when we were at E3 the first year, <coughs> or maybe the second year, I'm not sure. We were there for the beginning and there was a uh, like a, a, an announcement with like the mayor of LA that, um, that they had just signed a new deal to keep E3 in the LA Convention Center for a few more years. And ultimately, that is, um, that's part of it, right? You know, they, they do that to keep costs down. They negotiate to stay in the same place to try and reduce the rental fees because renting the LA Convention Center is not cheap. But the other piece is there's so much business that is done at E3 that, that we as fans don't see, even with like infinite streamers and the public going in. Um, having it be in the same place makes it really convenient because, you know, if, you know, the, the second year that we were there and John was there with uh, me both times EFG went to E3 when they were like, Hey, we're at this hall or, Hey, we're at this plant, this thing across the street, or, Hey, we are in, you know, such and such a place. We knew where it was and it made it easier to go. Whereas if it was in a different location, it would, um, it would make doing the work of E3 a little bit harder because you would have to relearn, you know, oh, where's the hotel that you're having, you know, appointments and suites or, you know, where are these conference rooms? And also, you need a really big facility in order to um, host an event that big. You know what I mean? So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it, it's stuck in L.A., um, I can say with certainty, you know, it was a bucket list thing. I'm really glad that we went, but we certainly get more work done being uh, at, you know, being here <laughs> than we do going there. So um, anyway, so that's E3. It's back. I am, oh man, I am just so excited. I can't, I just can't wait. It is my favorite time of the year. No questions about that. Um... Anybody in the uh, chat have any wild predictions for E3 this year or hopes, dreams? I am all ears because I think we actually are approaching the end of our time here this week. Jeff, while we do that, I appreciate you uh, being here. Oh, she she's hoping that they'll show us Breath of the Wild 2. I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Breath of the Wild 2 is going to get pushed. So, um, listen, I'm going to dream right with you. I want to play it faster. Dracon, that's Ill Paladin. He's uh, one of my World of Warcraft guildmates. Sega, how about this? This is something that you might not uh, have seen. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Metacritic does a uh, awards, gives out awards every year for like the publisher of the year. And actually the publisher of the year for 2020 was actually Sega. And the reason for that is they put out a lot of different games across like a broad spectrum of genres and they are all pretty good. You know, they were fueled by things like two point hospital and, you know, some other smaller games, but rather than doing really big stuff, they do, you know, relatively small titles that all review very well. Also Sega has the total war franchise, which does pretty well. Um, so yeah, Sega Sega does not need to come back. Sega is here. It's just Sonic that sucks. <laughs> but like Sega, they they have figured out their niche and it's you know, kind of some Japanese stuff, you know, uh some anime games, etc. and then like Total War and Two Point Hospital and some other simulations. So, yeah, it is wild. It is absolutely wild. So, uh Jeff, we did it. 
We made it through one more we episode of the EFG show. Everybody, we're going to be back next week. Uh, here's the schedule. Mondays, I am here on twitch.tv slash engagedfamilygaming, and I will be here playing World of Warcraft with Dana. We are uh, on the hunt for Thunder Fury, the Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Believe it or not, it's not just a meme. It's an actual thing. And so we will be trying to hunt that down. And then after that, we uh, do Torghast, Tower of the Damned. And uh, we'll be doing that for quite some time. Uh, Tuesday, I'm recording the Engaged Family Gaming Podcast. That next week is video game week. So we will likely be talking about some of these games. And uh, then we'll be back next week for thir- on Thursday. Next week is going to be a big March Madness update. Because we have finished round one. We are moving into the round of 32 tomorrow. So it's going to be wild. We're going to go over the whole thing. So, everybody, Jeff, thank you. Are you done with your Lego set, by the way? I saw part of it. Like, are you there? No. No, it's... uh, I'll move my camera again. While you were gone, um, Mega Mom asked about it. It's about half... It's about three-fourths of the way done. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well done, sir. Yeah, it... As I said, it has a lot because it has a lot of intricate pieces because they they set up the walls. I mean, if you ever look at the Central Perk set and Friends, it is packed. And so my fat fingers was having difficulties putting things into place. Um, huh. I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. I have trouble with Legos, too. Um, I just found out that a uh, Lego NES may be com- maybe are finding its way to my home. So um... my so my TV fell apart. Like I could not get it to stay together. So hey, good luck with that. Um, yeah, I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but we're gonna figure it out. So everybody, I hope you have a wonderful night. Jeff and I will be back next week, and obviously I will be back on Monday. Until next time, uh, don't forget. To get your family game on. We'll see y'all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.